So today we'll be going to my garage to test a new way for polishing dice or resin using a vibratory tumbler. I'm hoping that this will reduce the amount of hand sanding that I have to do, because hand sanding sucks. You can certainly speed up your polishing by using a pottery wheel, but if I could just have a more set it and forget it method while still maintaining an acceptable level of polish, I'd do that every time. So let's test if this quick and easy vibratory case tumbler is worth using. I was sent a document by a viewer on Twitter that detailed essentially everything that I'm going to be doing in this video by Whispered Dice Works in a step-by-step -step process. It had some crazy looking result pictures, so I had to totally give this a shot. Huge thanks to Whispered Dice Works for putting a document like this together so others could try it out. The secret to this, instead of a rotary or rock tumbler, is twofold. The first of which is the type of media that it uses, in this case hardwood. And it must be fate because I'm going to be polishing dice and this hardwood comes in little dice cubes, isn't that nice? And the second thing is that this tumbler doesn't really tumble so much as it just vibrates and shakes around a lot. You can see the springs on the bottom of this that causes that rapid shaking motion it vibrates so much and so frequently that it almost acts like a puck on an air hockey table when there's nothing in it. You can see how easily I'm able to move this thing around with one finger even though it's like five pounds whenever it's turned on. The tumbler has a giant bowl with a lid that you can thread on to make sure that nothing comes out, but because of that there's this giant thread in the very center of your bowl. That thread might be able to scratch some of the dice whenever you're trying to sand things, so we need to cover that up with a funnel. Or at least something like a funnel, but that seems like the cheapest solution. The funnel I bought happened to be a little bit too tall, so I wasn't able to close the lid on there properly. Not a big deal, I'm just going to cut the tip off with a drywall saw. It's not important that the funnel actually cover the entire thread, it just needs to be able to go deep enough for you to pour enough media in to do some proper tumbling. The hardwood media that we're using is different than sandy or gritty normal media that goes in rotary tumblers, and why do we use that instead? Honestly, I got no idea. I'll try experimenting myself, but Whispered Dice Works seem to have done some experimenting and they came up with this as the best solution. Also, make sure that you try turning the tumbler on briefly to see if you have enough media, as when it vibrates the media will settle and you'll have less than you think you have in there. One of the reasons I think we use hardwood media is because that wood soaks up liquid really well, and we're going to be putting a liquid in there in the form of Plast X. I used to use this polishing compound for dice, so it's not totally out of place here. We need to put a whole bottle into the hardwood media at first to let it soak up into the wood and be more effective. We're actually going to leave this overnight and let it just kind of vibrate for a while, but first we got to go ahead and mix it up. You do not need to wear gloves when mixing this stuff up, it's just polishing compound and hardwood. However, it does get very messy and I highly, highly recommend wearing gloves because this stuff does stick to you and it's really hard to wash off because it's kind of already a greasy mess. I also recognize that this step may be wholly unnecessary since this tumbler is meant to, you know, mix things up on its own, but either way, I'm going to go ahead and close the lid and leave this on overnight to let both the hardwood soak in and let this machine kind of run for the first time. Also, because the tumbler vibrates, it may try and sneak its way off your desk, so I put some metal gardening stakes down so that it couldn't. After a whole night, the wood is definitely moist and we're ready to throw in our test subjects. The first of which is going to be a control group just to see what happens. All of these are unsanded beforehand like the document suggests. The first of which is going to be this round edged clear plastic die that you can get from a manufacturer. These other two are these kind of matte die that I got from Kitty Bones Dice. I thought they'd be good to test. And then another one is this really crystal clear D6 that I made. And then for comparison, the second group of test subjects that I sanded down, I used Zona papers. I only sanded using the green grit paper, which is pretty close to one 1000 grit sandpaper just like the document recommends and you can see the tens place d10 here where i sanded is a lot more sanded and then the matte die hardly changed at all after being sanded for both the d6 and for the d20 that we're going to be checking on note the five that was sanded away on this d20 for comparison later the unsanded die will not have a sanded away five the d6s i've made however will have the greatest test as it's the largest difference in appearance between unsanded and fully polished if i can get pretty close to a glass like shine this would be absolutely amazing though I do have my doubts and I'll explain why a little bit later. Now that ends my direct comparison. I'm also going to throw something that wasn't recommended in the documentation in there to see if it works. This is a set of my free dice file 3D printed masters and I wanted to see if I could take them right off the printer, cure them, and throw them in to sand them to a polished shine. I don't think that that's going to work because as you can see here there's a lot of build lines and that's a little bit more rough than a sanded surface but hey a guy can hope right? Now each time you use the tumbler you need to re-moisten your media with some more Plast X. I I do another half bottle because this is the first time that I used it and it was starting to feel a little bit dry and I wanted to make sure that there was enough in there, but supposedly you only need a little drizzle whenever you use it after the first time. It's not important that you put these dice under the media. I kind of thought it was, but I was dumb. It's going to vibrate and they're going to make their way down there naturally. I put the lid on and then leave this thing for 20 hours to let it do its thing. You can see here an hour's time lapse. The dice definitely move on their own and get under the hardwood media. The machine is decently loud, but it's not as bad as a rotary tumbler. I could leave 
it in the garage and not hear it inside the house. And you don't have to worry about this water that's forming on the lid. It's super humid in Texas, and for some reason, I guess it just decided to form on the lid. It doesn't really have any effect on the dice as far as I know. But now it's time to fish them out, which is definitely really hard and kind of a treasure hunting game on its own, but you don't have to worry about scratching them up because they're intentionally scratched by all this hardwood. You may even be doing some more sanding. But with that, we're done with the sanding process. It literally was set it and forget it. As far as checking the results, you can see here the control D10 that I used of the regular plastic that was clear and see-through compared to the one that I sanded and threw in the tumbler. It looks awesome. This looks super clear, super see-through. If it worked like this every single time, I would have no problems. It has nice rounded edges like it did before. Absolutely great. But then I had to lower my expectations just a little bit. I was really hoping that the matte dye and the sanded matte dye would look different, but at least the sanded version turned out looking exactly how the matte one did after it was thrown in the tumbler, which I guess is a good thing. The same thing goes for the D6s. They now look virtually identical after doing all that pre-sanding versus doing the control. They got to as crystal clear as they could get, but I was disappointed. But I was disappointed for the wrong reasons, which I'll talk about in a minute. You can see the control version here of the D6 turned out amazing. It was still crystal clear, but uh-oh, look what happened here. The one we pre-sanded turned out way more matte, and it's not translucent and see-through at all. So what happened? Honestly, since the red one wasn't sanded, it had no tooth in which it could get polished or turned matte, and the blue one did as good as it could, which again, we'll get to here at the very end. The freshly printed unsanded resin dice masters, however, pretty much nothing happened to them. Because of the build lines, there was no way for the sanding material to sand this properly. Maybe if I left it in there for days, something might change, but then you'd lose a lot of the quality of your die. Now, there is some gunk on these dice, which you should try and remove using an extra soft toothbrush and some water, and that does help improve the clarity of the D6 that we saw just a little bit, but it's not a glass-like polish, which is what I was really hoping for, but I, I think I was just dreaming a little bit. If I set my expectations a little bit lower for a set it and forget it style compared to meticulously hand sanding it to a glass-like polish, we get something pretty good. Now, these D10s turned out amazing. They are very crystal clear, but they're also made of a different type of material. That's the injection molded plastic for versus resin that we do at home. This is where the setting expectations comes in because honestly, the matte dye looked great and this was how they were before. So if you're going for a matte sheen to your dye, I think this gives you a great polish and you didn't really have to do anything to them. And depending on your level of acceptable polish, the D6 may be enough for you as well. If you want more glass-like translucency, then you just gotta go for that little bit of hand sanding. Of course though, the 3D printed masters do need to be sanded before you can do anything to them. However, I was looking at the documentation and noticed that they're using all opaque colors and and the D6 that we got polished looks equally as good as their D6 that they got polished, so I think that this method is best used for opaque dice or rounded edge dice. The opaque colors don't need to have a glass-like shine since there's nothing to see behind the surface color, and rounded edge dice are incredibly hard to hand sand. This may be a method for me to actually get back into rounded edge dice because I hated that so much. That's not to say that I don't think you can use sharp edge dice. I notice absolutely zero degradation of quality to my sharp edge dice, so I would have no problem at all throwing a die like this or some of my other more opaque sets like my Sorcerer's Wild Magic one into this tumbler because it's still going to hold up its sharp edges and you would hardly notice a difference in color if it were opaque. Like this Dicey Encounters one here, if you were doing this kind of milky style or a dirty pour, I think it's perfect for sanding these type of die. You could just leave it overnight and not have to think about it anymore. As long as you go in with the proper expectations, I think this is a great new method of sanding things. However, if you're doing some translucent glass like like dice, I don't think anything beats the hand sanding just yet. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you might want to see some more experiments like this in the future, and let me know in the comments below if you would use this sanding method or not. Like the video if you like it, dislike it if you disliked it. Either way, I hope that you have a fantastic day.